So there are several specific mechanisms of action as to how acupuncture actually works. The first one that's been researched the most is the release of endorphins. When you're doing acupuncture properly, your body releases several opioid peptides or uh, endorphin molecules like beta endorphin, endomorphin, dionorphin, and encaphalin. These hormones influence obviously the sensation of pain, they change our whole body's sense of stress and the sense of chronic life stress. They can improve sleep, tissue repair, and can even help you with your appetite. The effect these endorphins have is to actually downregulate your immune system's inflammatory response. Acupuncture, and especially with the release of these endorphins, can also activate your vagus nerve, which regulates much of your fight or flight or tender befriend, or what we call your sympathetic, moving to your parasympathetic stress response. When your vagus nerve has better tone, this can lower your heart rate, improve peristalsis, or the movement of food through your gut, and is another way to get your body to move from that sympathetic fight or flight response to a parasympathetic rest and digest and repair response. Acupuncture can also help modulate certain neurotransmitters like dopamine, serotonin, uh, and stress hormones like ACTH and norepinephrine that are hormones that help mediate your pain perception. So those are just some specific examples about how acupuncture can help your body reduce the sensation or the perception of pain, as well as help the body repair itself and shift itself into that repair status instead of that fight or flight status, which are, as it turns out, fundamental to the way your body actually can heal itself. Now, for those of you who really like to get into the, the deep dives around acupuncture, there's another aspect of how acupuncture works that has to do with what is called gate control or gate theory. And I'm going to try and make that sort of as clear as I can, but it's, it's a bit complicated. So there's different nerves that go from, say, your hand uh, up into your spine and then up into your brain. And some of these nerves are very big in the sense that they uh, would be like, say, like my thumb compared to my little finger. So having a bigger, somewhat like, say, an electrical cord, more bioelectrical conductivity is possible because it's just a bigger structure. Also, some nerves that are small have a lot of what is called myelin sheath around them, which if this was an electrical cord, imagine an electrical cord that didn't have plastic coating around it, you'd probably start a house fire. That's why all of our extension cords and plug-ins have plastic around them or rubber around them. So as long as your nerves have a good coating, then the signals are very fast and very effective. So there's three different kinds of nerves that your body actually uses to have a sense of comfort and pain, say in your hand. So I'm going to go through each of them very quickly, give you a sense of how they work, and that should give you a sense of what acupuncture is doing and what other therapies are doing that change the way your brain perceives pain. So if I injure my hand, the pain perception goes up what is called an A-delta fiber. And this is a very thin fiber that has a heavy or thick myelin sheath, which means that signal is very, very immediate into my brain. In fact, it's just about less than two-tenths of a second from the moment, let's say, you burn your hand on the stove to the point where you're, you're already shaking your hand because your brain knows that something's wrong. And about two-tenths of a second later, you actually, as a person, are like, ow, I burn my finger. So that's actually fairly quick in the sense of, of how uh, nerve muscle brain activity works. So there's another nerve in my hand we call an A beta fiber. We'll just call that the B fiber. It's a bit bigger in the sense of the fiber size. It's also highly coated or thickly coated, so it's very fast. And this B nerve uh, or A beta fiber its job is to uh, understand movement and what's called proprioception and pressure. Proprioception is kind of how your body knows where it is in space and, and how to move. And it's what they're testing when they get you to do this thing uh, on the side of the road if you get pulled over late at night. So this nerve fiber um, is moving that information up into your spine, which is why most people, when they burn their finger, are instinctually going like this. Because if there's information of movement, uh, especially really rapid movement going up that, B fiber, the amount of room for that A fiber or that perception of the burn on your finger uh, is somewhat diminished. And the third fiber, we're going to call it the C fiber, 
A, B, and C. The C fiber is also large, but it has a very thin coating around it, so it has a, a slower and more diffuse messaging with the body. It responds mostly to slower signals like constant pressure, constant cold, or the constant mild irritation of an acupuncture needle uh, talking to the nerves and muscles of the body. The amount of information or electricity moving through that C fiber increases over time. So the longer you leave that pressure on, the longer you would leave, say, a cold pack or an ice pack on, uh, if you're leaving the needles in for 15 to 20 minutes, you could say that the amount of volume, uh, in the sense of what you would hear uh, from, say, some music, gradually increases. So again, the amount of information or... Uh, noise going into your brain through the C-fiber gets gradually higher and higher over a few minutes to, to a few hours. So again, these three fibers, all coming from my hand, enter into my spine. And as long as I'm keeping either proprioceptive activity going, pressure activity going, uh, cold going, or of course all of the things that happen with acupuncture, I'm doing what is called gate control. If the, there's only so much noise or electrical information that can go through from your hand into your brain through your spine, it's actually that gate between the A fiber, B fiber, and C fiber that determines your experience. So you have, say, burnt your finger, and that amount of pain is coming up into your brain, but if you have the pressure going, or the movement going, or obviously with acupuncture going up the arm into the brain, you can't really hear the pain so much anymore because all that other kind of information, or, or noise, if you will, is actually going into the brain which is fundamentally how acupuncture works with respect to pain, at least in that first few hours to few days. When we look into the trigger points, either the ones that have to do with nerves enter muscles or uh, nerves from connective tissue tell your brain how strong you are, or those myofascial trigger points, uh, how acupuncture works on them can actually be seen under a microscope inside the, the trigger point itself when the needle goes into it. So imagine, if you will, that there's a little inflammatory capsule and a trigger point where there's trauma inside the muscle and the myofascial sheath around it, and the body is using that trauma to keep your body tense and sore and tight and feeling wounded. When a skilled acupuncturist puts a needle into that trigger point, moves it around precisely, there are certain changes that happen within the structure of the trigger point itself that help the body heal. Quite often with acupuncture, when we're dealing with pain, once the needle's where we want it to be, we usually just spin it or rotate it a little bit, not a lot, and we're not doing this to torture people. What we're actually doing is to spin the needle gently to wrap some of the damaged fibers around the needle and to pull on them, kind of like stretching them out. And when that, that happens, a very specific uh, protein that has to do with tissue healing and scar tissue formation they're called fibroblasts, so when you stretch them out, they actually release local endorphins like encaphalin into the local site, which very quickly reduces pain, but more importantly tells the body to go from an inflammatory response to a repair response. And if everything's going well, it's usually within one to two weeks after that kind of micro trauma to the trigger point, uh, happens that the tissue inside that trigger point starts to go back to normal. So in some situations, uh, one or two treatments within the space of a week or two is enough, whereas other people it might be four, six, eight, or 12 treatments, just depending on how many trigger points, how many muscles are injured, how many are recruited, and how long it takes your body get back, to get back to a normal biomechanical uh, position or posture or structure. And this is where I think it's a good idea to remind people that acupuncture is a part of the process of healing your tissues not the only way or the only thing that's going to help you. After an acupuncture treatment, when the pain has settled down, the swelling or inflammation has settled down, maybe a couple of days later, it's a good idea to begin certain kinds of stretching uh, to help the injured tissues stretch out again and allow the collagen, which is what most of your connective tissue is made of, to reform in a, a natural, healthy way instead of a more scar tissue or kind of balled up way. So again, acupuncture helps with this process, but stretching, postural awareness, and doing things with your diet and supplements to make sure you have high collagen in your diet and also uh, good anti-inflammatory benefits from your diet and supplements to make sure your healing goes completely well. 
Otherwise, things just take a lot longer. So although a lot of this action is happening local in the muscle, local in the, the nerve plates, the motor plates, these are uh, what are called Golgi tendon organs, there's a lot of things that are happening right in that muscle that's injured. But remember those all those fibers going through your, your body up into your spinal column and then from your spine up into your brain. And one of the most interesting things about using acupuncture in the long term, especially for chronic pain, is that those endorphins that get secreted, specifically in cephalin, actually competes with what is called substance P, which is one of those strange molecules that science is still trying to understand that has a lot to do with the messaging of pain within the body. So there's the local benefit, there's the immediate neurological benefit, and then over time, there's a shift of the actual hormones of uh, how your brain remembers you and itself and your body uh, based on this substance P and these other endorphins, especially in cephalin. So that should give you an idea of how acupuncture works in the mechanical injury sense and the chronic injury, uh, chronic illness sense.